Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video I am going to be carrying out a replacement of the front brake pads on my VFR 800 VTEC. Now, um, what I'm going to be using for these is EBC uh, double H sintered brakes. Um, these pads come highly recommended um, by many, many people that have used them in the past and um, I'm going to give them a bash. I'm, I've not used these before myself personally. Um, so, uh, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll give them a go. See how they get on. Now, what I'm going to do, obviously, is I'm going to um, I'm not just going to remove the um, the pad pin and pull the pads out. I'm going to physically remove the caliper from the uh, from the disc, give it a good clean uh, with some brake cleaner and a, and a toothbrush. Um, that should see it uh, see it right for a good uh, a good year or so, um, and it helps prevent uh, the the uh, the piston sticking. So let's get on with the job. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, before we actually begin with uh, overhauling the, uh, the front brakes, what I want to do is I want to talk about the disc very briefly. As you can see here, stamped just inside the hub, it says minimum thickness 3.5 millimeters. That is the surface uh, service limit of the uh, the discs on this bike. Um, if they are 3.5 millimeters or less, then they are to be replaced. They're um, they're beyond uh, the service limit. So I've got a micrometer here. Let's open her up and just. Uh, Clamp it on, let the ratchet do its thing. There we go. And check the reading. We've got one, two, three, four, 4.41 4 millimeters. So we're well within the service limit. We know that these uh, these discs are good and they've got a little bit of life left in them. I think the, uh, I think the, if I, if I recall correctly, the actual um, brand new OE thickness is 4.5 millimeters. So they are slightly worn, um, there's no real lip in, um, however, they've still got plenty of life. Right, let's move on to the calipers. Okay, before we, uh, before we begin the actual replacement of the pads, what I do need to do is I need to remove a little bit of brake fluid from the, uh, from the master cylinder reservoir. Now the reason for this is because I recently changed the fluid, so I know that the fluid is at the upper limit um, in the reservoir, and in order to fit the new pads, because they're thicker, the pistons have to be pushed back into the caliper. Doing so will raise the level of the fluid in the reservoir beyond the upper limit and it will want to go somewhere. So guess where it's going to go? It's going to leak out. Um, so what we need to do is pop the cap off. Let's go in the pocket. over the bodywork just in case and there we go right what I've got here is a little syringe which I keep in my I keep this in my vacuum uh, my vacuum bleeder uh, box for this very purpose all I'm going to do is just suck out some of the fluid. Now, it doesn't need to be too much. Obviously, you want to leave some in there because you don't want to open up the port that goes down to the master cylinder because obviously then you introduce air into the system and we don't want that. All we need to do is just take enough fluid out so that when it comes up, it's not going to overflow. What I've got here, a little drip tray. I can pop my fluid into and it's not going to go anywhere else and cause any harm. So I reckon that's probably going to be enough, but I do need to keep an eye on it. So what I'm going to do, because I do need to move around the uh, the handlebars in order to get the caliper off, I'm going to pop this back on where it came from, just like so. Pop the cap back on, 
and stick the two screws in. Just just um, gonna nip them up and then we should we should be fine uh, for the level when we push the pistons back. Um, but what, obviously when we finish the job, I will come back and check it again and top up if required. So there we go, just nip that up. The other one, right. So I know now I can take the caliper off, push the pistons back in. There's uh, the fluid isn't uh, isn't going to go over the upper limit. So let's get on with it. Okay. So just before I remove the caliper, what I'm going to do just here is the uh, the the caliper um, the pad retaining pin, and it's easier to do it whilst it's on the on the bike. Just ease it off just to make sure that it is going to turn because sometimes they do like to corrode slightly and stick so that one's uh, that one's fine what we're going to do now we're going to remove the secondary master cylinder from the fork leg and obviously then take the uh take the caliper with it now as i said before what you can do is you can just pull the retaining pin out and the the uh pads can be removed but as part of the process I like to give the uh, calipers themselves a good clean out because obviously they do get caked in brake dust and all sorts of things and um, it's a good idea to uh, to maintain a healthy um, brake caliper so there we go that's the caliper off and here we can see the pads. Now they're not terrible, they've got a little bit of life left in them. As you can see, the ones in the new pack are uh, a lot healthier looking. They've got at least double the thickness, but you can also see how dirty all of this is. So that's the reason why I wanted to take it off. So what I'll do next is remove the pad retaining pin, which we previously loosened. pressure on the on the pads themselves it takes them takes the pressure off the pin so it will come out now um, that's not terrible I've seen worse uh, that will clean up a little bit of emery cloth and here we have the two pads they'll literally just pull out like so dead easy as it goes these actually look like they are EBC items as it happens yeah they uh, they actually look like identical pads um, to the ones I'm going to uh, going to fit so that's good so because these actually do feel like quite nice um, uh, you know they, they I like the brake force that these um that these um, allow they're they're, uh, they're a good it feels like a good uh, brake pad so I'm pleased with that right now what I do need to do is just inside here there is a clip there it is that is made of stainless steel um, and that again will also clean up so what I need to do first as I was discussing um, before is I do need to um, push these pistons back in in order to be able to get the new new pads in but I'm going to give them a good clean prior to pushing them in because otherwise all I'm going to do is drag all of this this here all of this dirt and old brake dust that will just get dragged into the seals and we don't want that so let's get some brake cleaner out get an old toothbrush give them a good scrub right then what i've got a bit of a uh, brake and chain cleaner this stuff is basically a solvent and it will get rid of all of this all of this uh all of this stuff but obviously what i've done is i've put a pair of gloves on because it's probably not that great for your skin so Give it a good dousing in there. Old toothbrush. 
get it in here, give it a good scrub out, get rid of all this old brake dust. In particular attention to the pistons, as you can see. Be quite liberal with the brake cleaner, because as you can see, it's drying off already. It's, it doesn't last too long, especially in, on a day like this. And on a nice warm day, it'll, it'll, it'll evaporate really fast. Get in here, give it a good, good scrub out. And as you can see, what I've done is I've put my drip tray underneath because otherwise I'll end up with dirty, a dirty mess all over my garage floor. A little bit more. Right. Get my wipes, give them a good wipe down. Get inside here where the front of the pad sits. Get in there, in fact. That does come off, we'll get, get it off with a screwdriver. There we go. Just had to push the caliper back slightly in order to be able to get that out. And we'll give this a little bit of a scrub as well. This is where the caliper, uh, sorry, this is where the pad actually sits at the front. So get rid of all of this old brake dust. A little bit clean. These are made of stainless steel, so they shouldn't be corroded, not really. Um, just get all the old brake dust off of it, and that way it'll make sure that the new pads move nice and freely. Put that back to one side. Right, as I said before, this spring, again, covered in, uh, covered in, um, brake dust. Let's give that a good clean as well. And there we are, as you can see, that looks a lot nicer already. 10 seconds spent doing this is all it takes to prolong the life of your brakes. And to be fair, this does not need to be done just when you change your pads. This should be um, part of your regular maintenance, you know, every, every couple of months, just pull your caliper off and give it a good clean out. That way, 
they'll uh, be doing what they need to do for longer. Okay, there we are. That's them both clean. Now I'm pretty happy with the inside of the caliper. Um, obviously, I could get it cleaner than that if I need, if I wanted to, but I, that I'm happy with the uh, with how that looks. Now, the pistons themselves, you should be able to push them in with your fingers, as you can see. It's going in quite easily. There's not a lot of resistance to it. If you find there's a lot of resistance or you can't push it in with your thumb then you are going to need to overhaul your your, your, uh, your calipers because that means that you've got a sticking piston, most likely. This obviously is going to raise the, the fluid level, as I said before, so that's the reason why we took a little bit of fluid out just to be on the safe side. Push the middle one back in. And then the third and final one. And there we are. That's all three pistons pushed back in. Where that little um, where the little plate at the front sat, there's a little bit of corrosion behind it, so I'm gonna give it a bit of a scrub with my toothbrush just to get it all out. There we are. I'm happy with that. Okay, now let's get everything back together. Time with this clip at the front. Bit awkward to get into it. There we are. That's that on. You heard it click. This one goes in that way make sure obviously check the orientation of it as you um, take it out but just in here below the middle piston there's a little protrusion that sticks out and if you try and put it in the other way it won't go that's what that little cutouts for so get that in there and again it will click into place right then that is as far as we need to go with the caliper for the moment first thing we need to do is get one of the packs of pads opened Pad retaining pin, I'm just going to give it a little scrub with a bit of scotch bright. If this is heavily corroded and really bad, you can always just get a new one. They're not expensive, they're probably four or five quid um, from somewhere like Fowler's Parts or even, even eBay if you uh, if you had a look. Um, this one's not too bad. Um, and it, yeah, it's cleaned up nice and it's nice and smooth. Um, the next time I come to uh, change these pads, I may find that that's quite heavily corroded because obviously the plating that's on there will um, eventually disappear and it will allow rust to set in. But at the moment, it's pretty decent. Okay, let's uh, let's open a set of the pads. Right, put the lid back on the brake cleaner. Okay, so yeah, as I said before, these uh, these look to be the same as the ones that I took off the bike, um, so I'm quite pleased about that. Now, to fit them, it is simply a case of making sure that that part there, this little protrusion on the end of the um, pad, sits inside the runner that we cleaned a moment ago. So simply pop it in like so. First one, and second one. Push them down against the spring pad at the bottom. Feed through the pad retaining pin, like so. And get it in a couple of threads. And there we are. That's all there is to it. Now, one thing I do want to point out before I get uh, people um, shouting at me in the comments is yes, I have not put copper slip on my brake pads. I don't do it, I never do it, and I never will do it. If you want to do that, then that's fine. If you want to comment on the, uh, in the, if you want to comment on the fact that I haven't done it, then 
by all means do so, but you'll be wasting your time because it'll just get an ignoring. It's not called for in any factory manual ever, um, and therefore I'm not going to do it. Um, it it's something that seems to be a bit of a bone of contention with, with people. It's bizarre. I don't want to get into um, a massive flaming discussion about it. I don't do it, and I'm not going to do it. If you want to, by all means, crack on. Anyway, moving on. What we need to do next is um, tighten down the retaining pin, and then we can fit the caliper back onto the fork leg. So let's get a torque wrench out because we will require that and um, we will get that all sorted. Right then, so obviously making sure that the pads are nicely opened up, otherwise you won't be able to get it onto the disc. Feed it over, ensuring that each pad goes either side, because again, that's fairly easy to, to do. And then what we need to do is just slide it back on. You may need to move the caliper sideways in order to achieve that. And there we go. Right, let's get these bolts in first. And tighten them down. Now these two bolts here are 31 Newton meters. One. 31 caliper um the sorry the pad retaining bolt is 18 newton meters what i'm going to do is i'm going to do that up to touch first oops wrong wrong size let's try the other one wrench down to 18 18 there we go and that is it guys right that is this side all done um, one thing we do need to do obviously as I said before is um, the brake fluid reservoir will need topping up to the correct level um, that will be done obviously once I've changed the Pads on the other side. Um, I'm not going to go through this process again because it's identical to this in every way, except that the caliper mounts directly to the fork leg instead of um, via a secondary master uh, cylinder bracket. Um, but other than that, the actual replacement of the pads is identical in every way. Once the pads are in, what we need to do is we need to pump the brake lever in order to reset the pistons back out, pushing the, uh, the, the pads out against the disc, um, and that way they're, they're ready to use. At that point, then top up the fluid. Uh, make sure that the pads, uh, the pistons are reset before you top up the fluid. Very important, guys. So, um, yeah, what I'll do, I will crack on with the uh, the other side. I'll get that side done, and then we will um, do do what we need to do with the uh, the fluid um, afterwards. I'll bring you back in once I'm ready to do that. Right, guys, I've now carried out um, a change of the brake pads on the right hand caliper also. So that's both fronts done both fronts cleaned up and uh, both fitted with nice new EBC um, uh, scented pads. Um, ready to go, ready to rock and roll. Okay, one thing I do want to point out, however, is um, as I mentioned previously, the ones in the left-hand caliper obviously are clearly um, EBC double H scented pads, same as the ones that I fitted. However, in the right-hand one, they're totally different. These um, are a Nissin uh, pad. Now it's odd, um, fairly odd that you would put one brand in one side and another brand of pad um, in the other side, or even two of the same pads, uh, same brands, but different, um, you know, uh, part numbers or whatever. That is a really, really odd thing to do. Um, now it just probably, I don't know, maybe the previous owner couldn't get hold of two pairs of one. Who, who, you know, who knows? Um, really, really unusual. Um, I didn't notice any uh, adverse effects um, from having two different types of brake pad in there. However, I thought it might be, <laughs> you know, a little bit, uh, a bit odd. Um, so I thought I'd show you. Anyway, 
that aside, let's put them on one side. What we're going to do next is we need to top up the fluid. However, obviously, because I've um, uh, pushed the pistons back into the caliper, what I do need to do is just give the lever a little pump. There we go. Just to reset them out. Um, if it, it will come back to the bar quite a lot the first time you do it until they're, until they're all the way out. Right then, what I'm going to do, pop me a little rag over the bodywork just to protect it in case any spills out. Pop the screws out. Level off the reservoir and then take the other one out. Pop the cap off, take the seal and the space of plastic out. And yeah, the level has gone up ever so slightly. However, it's not as high as I'd like it to be. So, what I'm going to do is add a tiny bit of fluid, not too much, because it doesn't need too much. Come on. that is plenty right yeah that's absolutely fine let's get the rubber gasket and the spacer back on put the top cap on get the screws in And there we go absolutely perfect okay guys that is the process for replacing the front brake pads on the vfr uh, 800 vtech obviously the other v vfr models will be very very similar um so yeah uh, hopefully you uh, you enjoyed this video one thing i do want to point out prior to um prior to close is that brand, brand new brake pads need a little bit of time to uh, to to bed in don't go uh absolutely hammering your bike and then expecting the anchors to, to work perfectly straight away. They need, they need a good 100, 150, 200 miles uh, in order to bed into the, uh, the, the new pads to bed into the disc. Um, after that, you should be fine. Um, but yeah, just bear that in mind, guys. Don't, uh, don't go crazy uh, too early. Okay, then. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, I'm going to release another one where I will do the rear, uh, the rear pads um, very soon as well. I'll make that a separate video of its own. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, as I said, and I will see you all again very soon for the next video. Thank you very much, guys. Bye-bye now.